Hello, it's me, Andy from Blitz Gaming. Hope you're all having a great day. It's still roasting in the UK. And I ate it. In fact, I've had sunstroke. Okay, what we got? We're going to have a shootout. We've got two H510 chips versus the B560. Um, cheapest in the middle, dearest. Had a day, so we're going for mystery. Now, all these were all on some sort of special offer at the time, but normal price would be literally £65 up to £125. Had a day, and this one was basically on special offer £85, but it's usually around the £100 mark, so take that in consideration. Had a day. Now, this has got no heat sinks, this has got heat sinks, this has got big chunky heat sinks at the end of the day and the test we're going to do we're going to use Cinebench and Blender for scores at the end of the day um, which is the best and we're using power testing straight from the wall what uses the maximum voltage now our case we're using we're using the Corsair 4000D airflow which includes three front flat fat fans three front fans and one exhaust fan yeah and the reason we're doing that because in most cases these days uh, we've got airflow coming in and plus it's very hot in the UK we're trying to keep everything cool as possible but take that in consideration you're using a little bit more wattage than normal I will put the test on uh, a test check how much the wattage is differences um but it's basically going to be about 25 watts overall at the end of the fans um and the controllers but let's see which is the best of the batch okay let's have a look at the test results You can see the way they'll work, they'll turbo and come back down um, to the speed they want to be. I mean, under 65 watts, everything went fine, nothing got too hot at the end of the day, but the Intel fan is noisy. I'm telling that now, and it ain't powerful enough to run it at 125 watts. But otherwise, all the scores, at the end of the day, come out pretty good. And then uh, there is one leader at the end of the day. Okay, before you ask, does anything get up to 4.4? No. Okay, so under 65 watts, this Intel CPU fan is quiet. Yeah. I mean, it may turbo for... 10 to 20 seconds, yeah. Um, on the gigabyte air turbo for about a minute, then go down. Just the way it, the way their system works. And then they, and yes, it does get noisy when it does turbo, as I just said. But otherwise, at 65 watts, it's quiet, runs fine. So on the 125 watt setting, um, now the package is not on some of them are not actually going at 125 watts coming down to 125 watts some of them might be 130 134 and even going up to 140s or even running up to 150 yeah or a bit more then going down but they're not going down to the 125 now the gigabyte one we set to 125 so it won't go above the 125 that's one of the reasons why the voltage the scores come out good but the Asus one does go down to the 125. Now depending on what setup you're going to have, now you can play around with the bio settings so really make it go right to 4.4. But again, you want to make sure you get a very, very good fan or an all-in-one water system really. Okay, temperatures, the hottest first. 
Uh, we're going from 88, you know, 84 to 88 C. Asus being the hottest, then MSI, then Gigabyte. The minimum temp temperatures we would get in were between 58 C and 67. Again, Asus being the hottest, MSI, then Gigabyte. Okay, Blender this time. The hottest temperatures between 83 and 89. Asus, MSI, and Gigabyte. Again, same as before, not much difference. The minimum tensions we're getting were between 58 and 67. Asus, MSI, and Gigabyte, exactly the same as last time. At the end of the day. Now I'll switch to 125 watts. This is where you want a good fan. Yeah, I'm telling you, don't use the Intel fan. We're going from 91 to 100C. And the order is MSI, Asus, then Gigabyte. The minimum temperatures we're getting were 83 to 94. Again, MSI being the hottest, followed by Asus, then Gigabyte. In Blender, again, we're still doing 90 to 100. But the, uh, the change is around. Asus now leads the pack. Followed by MSI, then Gigabyte. The minimum temperatures we were getting is between 87 and 94 C. MSI back to the top, followed by Asus, then Gigabyte. Now we're talking about when we're getting 100 C. Now we're we're talking about maximum CPU temperature you should be at. Now this is where it gets a bit strange. Now you think where Asus and MSI were ruling the packs in the wattage and the temperature. Department, you think that would be the biggest scores? <laughs> they're, they're not. Gigabyte seems to get fine here. Bangs out 10,071 at the end of that 25 watts. 125 watts, that is. And 65 watts, again, it does 8,000 plus. Uh, again, it's Gigabyte board. Considering it ain't got no heat sinks, and the day, it's the cheapest board, it seems to do the best in the score department. And then they. Again, on Blender, uh, there's no change. Gigabyte and Asus on 125 watts uh, seem to be the same score. And MSI being the slowest at the end of the day. And 65 watt Gigabyte went again with a great store score. Then Asus, then MSI. I think the reason why Gigabyte have a better score than everybody else as I said earlier, on these two tests, basically um, the Gigabyte board will run up full speed and it stayed there literally for 60 seconds, then slow down and that 60 seconds, yeah, it's high enough clock speed for a certain amount of time to win the overall speed. Okay, to change the settings on the BIOSes on the MSI, it's as simple, you just go down to the CPU cooler profile down on the left or tuning and click basically tower to bang it up to 125 watts yeah um i don't know what happens if you put it on water cooler that may give it even more 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 power i don't know i didn't try it with a hundred um, with a water cooler but you need a good good cooler now i did do a test one with an antec a30 cpu cooler extremely quiet did not stop it from going to up to 100C. Yeah, at 125 watts. So, don't bother buying one of them if you want to run it at 125 watts. Now, I've got the latest BIOS for Gigabyte. There's settings change a bit. You have to go down to turbo power limits, turn on enable. Then you've got two settings. Yeah. Uh, package one and package two. You both, both, of these set, both of those to 125 watts or higher. Depends what you want to do really and it should be fine if you put it onto auto it run between 65 and a bit high up and 125 watts yeah turbo to 125 for about a minute then it run down to 65 watts now you can set it both to 65 watts and she comes out nice and slow and cool okay for the asus bios you go to ia ai tweaker and then you just go to the asus Performance Enchantment tab. Enable for 125 plus watts. Disable for 65 uh, for any watch. 
Okay, we're back. And the winner is Gigabyte, the H510MS2H. Why did it win? Simple. Better thermals, better wattage, better score, and it was cheaper. What more can you want at the end of the day? Now, Percy 48 is to win, uh, truthfully. And then they, out of the two H5 boards, being one having um, heat sinks, but obviously that wasn't the case. And got the the B560, and then they were bigger heat sinks. Again, <laughs> it never got cooler. And then they, now I think the reason being this got the best scores and the best thermals in so and so. Um, it's just the way it runs. It just basically, it will clock up. Basically, you, you run blender or whatever, and it, it go up to maximum speed, and it stay there for the, nearly up to sixty seconds. Yeah, then drop down, and it's basically doing what four point two, four point three, literally in some cases. And that extra for that extra sixty seconds, that extra clock speed is banging out. Yeah. Gives it the highest speed, yeah, and then it dropped down for I mean, blender what runs for depends what you got it on. I mean, literally, minimum settings we had it on so for nine minutes, then it'll run basically standard setting and it'll be going out between 3.9 to 4.2. And I think the way it was doing that allowed it to be cool enough and use less power. Where the other two boards were going up to maximum wage and then I was all going down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down and then they um, on certain of the cores and I think that's the reason why they were using more watts and basically heating thermal limits uh, especially on the MSI getting up to 100C you think with these bigger chunky heat sinks you won't go nowhere near 100C but if you go by the BIOS uh, settings and if you read the manual, probably says the same thing in the Asus board. Basically, if you're going to go 125 watts, please buy a very good aftermarket cooler. And then they. Um, now, I did do a test one because I had one spare. I've got an Antec A30. Now we're talking about we're talking small fan and an A, but it's it's got a way bigger heatsink than the Intel um, system. It never made no noise. It stayed quiet even at 125 watts, but it did not stop it going to 100 C. So we're talking about you're going to need a chunky heatsink really <laughs> at the end of the day to stop it from going 100 C um, on those two boards. Okay, what advantage does the Asus have over the Gigabyte? Or well, it has those two heat sinks. Now, let's obviously we put a bigger fan in there. I don't think the scores have changed that much. And then they, because we're doing a budget build, remember, we're doing budget stuff. So I'm not expecting, I'm not trying to get you to go out and buy a £120 cooler. And then they. Um, 150 pound cooling case. It's, we're not doing that. We're trying to keep it to the cheapest possible. So, again, um, the Gigabyte board being the cheapest on there are free at the end of the day. Now, there is um, ASRock. They do do a cheaper board in this, but it doesn't come with an M2 socket, which I thought was a uh, bit bizarre. I get it. Why have you got an M2 socket? Every other board on planet Earth. They make these days got an M2 socket. Why don't you have one? I don't understand that. So we're not bothered buying that board. They do do another version with, with the M2. If we may get our hands on it. Depends what mood I'm in. At the end of the day. So let's have a look at a B560. What advantage is that got over the H510? Well, it's got four DIMMs. Yeah, so it's got four DIMM sockets, so you can upgrade your memory. So if you've got 16 gig of memory, you can update to 32 gig. Or you've got 32 gig, you can update to 64, or 8 to 16. Uh, which is it's a good thing, I suppose, in, in one sense. But 
if you're on a budget and I don't think you're gonna worry about going over 16 gigs of memory at all because um, you're not gonna be playing serious gaming so 16 gigs will be fine the other advantage you add uh, on the B560 ball from MSI it had two M2 sockets one being PCI-X4 uh, speed so yeah so and it supports MVM so yeah it's gonna be if you want you want the storage fast storage that's got it at the end of the day but I wouldn't buy that board unless you're gonna buy a nice big well at 65 watts that's no problem and it's quite no problem in a story um, okay the next thing you'll be saying why don't I test no games well okay I did test games and decided not to put them on the video because I couldn't see the point when I was testing them because we do budget builds now if you're using the um, AMD RX 550 or Nvidia's 1030 yeah 65 watts or 125 watts it didn't make no difference at all to the frame rate in fact when we tested this board when we built this system up um, with the Pentium Gold the frame rate was no different so you better off with the Pentium Gold and that's only a 50 pound processor and uh, where this 11400 processor is 150 yeah and it's basically 150 pound retail yeah I wouldn't go any more than that if you can help it uh, and I have seen it city priced on Amazon up to 380 pound which is daft at end day um, and yes graphic cards are still stupid about some money so but would I buy them 400 F that depends what you want planning to do if if you're just gonna build a budget system I wouldn't even buy an 11400F at all because it's, it was, I think it's too powerful for what I want. Yeah, if you're just going to go do online shopping and that sort of stuff, stay with the Pentium Gold. Yeah, it's a £50 processor. And basically, when that's running, that run up to maximum speed, literally, more or less constantly. It never really stopped at running at full throttle. Um, And on top of that, yeah, you bought the 11400F, you're doing it for the future, and hopefully you grab the cars come down to normal. Yeah, okay, yeah. You talk about getting a 2060, 3060, 3070, 3080, or whatever, um, or an AMD 6000 series grab the card, when they will come down to normal prices, that'll be fine. But I think, if you're not gonna do that, I personally think 11400F is a complete waste of the money, really. Uh, with the graphic cards, with, this, uh, with budget graphic cards, it just ain't worth the effort. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, the processor itself, bargain, uh, sp speed for, for money-wise, I mean, we're talking about, it's the, it's the best processor on the, on the market, better than any of these stuff. I mean, we're talking about six cores for £150, yeah. And this processor, I think, what's it, the 5600, is 200 odd pound. And they, boy, if you can get it, <laughs> if you want to go gaming, you plan to buy a decent graphic card, buy this processor, and then they, you're laughing. Um, but if you're not, as I said, don't bother. Okay, that's me nattering on. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did don't forget to comment and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Have fun all.